Hello my friends and welcome. Welcome to a very very special episode. It has been almost a year since I started my uh, YouTube channel and I want to make a video where I will feature the most valuable pieces in my collection but also the most rare pieces and all the species in uh, my uh, collection. I will start with the, the most, um, let's say, expensive fountain pens that are quite thought after by collectors and their price on the market is quite high. I'm not so sure about the current prices but I will try to give an estimate to each and every piece I have and uh, I will be quite sincere with you. I will uh, tell you what I paid for each and every one of them. And I will start with uh, one of my first purchases since I've been collecting fountain pens and maybe my luckiest buy till now and you will see what i mean so i bought this fountain pen in this uh, box you can see it's quite an old box but it's not its original box you can see written on uh, it goldsmith art jeweler apple yard eyesight specialist wakefield so wakefield is um, a city in england and I believe this was intended for some kind of uh, optical device, maybe some glasses, but it's not the original box. But it's certainly original to the period that uh, this fountain pen was made. So this fountain pen was made at uh, the beginning of the 1930s. And I think this box is from the late 1920s and 1930s. I will leave it aside, the box. Because I want to show you the beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. Well, uh, although the box is, uh, is from England, this fountain pen was made in Italy. And I have here a great example of a Omas Extra from 1932 in this great, beautiful celluloid. This fountain pen was made also in the faceted version. This is a cylindrical version, as you can see. A beautiful, beautiful version. And now is the unbelievable part of its story. Well, I paid for this fountain pen only 100 lays when I originally bought it. I didn't know much about it, but I knew that it is a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen. And this is a great buy for me. 100 lays means I paid only 21 euros for this beauty or 25 American dollars. When I got home with it, I studied on the internet and not right away because I didn't find much information about it. I didn't knew it's a quite uh, an early model of the Omas Extra from 1932. After a few months, I discovered a ad on eBay which had a similar uh, fountain pen, described as a woman's fountain pen, but it has some problems on the cap. And it was listed for, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, 1,000 euros. Of course, when you see items listed on eBay, you should do your research and find what was the last item that was sold. Because um, I can ask for it 10,000 euros. This doesn't mean that the transaction will end in finding a buyer that is uh, willing to give me 10,000 euros. But being such a rare item, I didn't find previous sold items. So I am estimating this fountain pen to be worth between 600 and 700 euros. So quite, quite a valuable fountain pen in my collection. Let's uh, move on. I have in this metallic Pelican box an iconic fountain pen from Pelican. Not many of you know, the, but the Pelican Souvron M800 is quite a model fountain pen. It first appeared in 19. 
87. So this particular box, this metallic box, I bought it separately on the internet. I think I paid around 20 euros for it or 25 American dollars. So quite, quite an expensive buy. But um, it is quite a rare example of the box. I believe it was made only for the Pelican sold in Italy. And I'm not so sure for what type of model, but uh, I believe it's series uh, M Souvran. It is a metallic box and quite, quite a nice uh, looking box for um, the Pelican. I will leave the box aside because I want to show you the beautiful, beautiful fountain pen. And if you've uh, watched my channel, you saw that I did my uh, a video on, for Apple Bomb where I stated um, three favorite fountain pens of mine. I cheated a bit because I... Um, I mentioned in that video six fountain pens, but believe me or not, this was one of my first purchase. Uh, in fact, the second purchase, because I have another Mont Blanc, it, that was the first fountain pen that I bought, but in the same day, I bought also this Souvron M800. And um, I paid for it quite a large sum of money, in my opinion, back then, for a fresh collector, 400 lei. 82 euros or 100 dollars american dollars and i was stunned by uh, its majestic beauty its uh, dimensions which i consider uh, quite perfect i don't own uh, yet an m1000 uh, uh, but i think that this has the right dimensions for enjoyable long writing session i consider it the perfect pelican to my surprise I discovered that this is an usual M800. And in fact, I had quite a rare fountain pen from the first or the second year of production. And why do I say that? Because only in 1987 and in 1988, this came with a 14 karat gold nib. As you can see, I have a 14 karat 585 broad nib, a beautiful, beautiful nib. And you can find the M800 with the 14 karat gold nib only in 1987 and in 1988. Unfortunately, being such an old fountain pen, it had this ring uh, corroded. Here it was a gold ring, but uh, it was corroded by the ink, so I have to. I had to remove it. In fact, I didn't uh, remove it by myself. As I was cleaning the nib, it just fell away. It disintegrated. Another clue that the, uh, this M800 is from 1987 or 1988 is this plaque here on the turning knob. It appears only in 1987 and in 1988 series. So this is the fountain pen. Of course, other clues are West Germany imprinted on the ring. Maybe this logo uh, is uh, quite particular to that year, but it is what it is. So I believe that this fountain pen, uh, f it is more expensive than a new M800 because it, had, uh, it has that 14 karat uh, nib. And... Um, I think this is a 500 euros fountain pen. I'm not so sure, but I'm estimating its value at 500 euros. Let's leave it aside. Now, quite a famous fountain pen. And uh, many of you will uh, say it is a quite plain fountain pen. And um, it costs new, I believe, around... Um, uh, let me see, around 250, 360 euros or approximately 300 American dollars. Well, I paid for it uh, 600 lace, which uh, means I paid around 120 euro or 150 American dollars. So I paid for this beautiful Waterman Karen, half of uh, the the price so a beautiful 18 karat gold nib you can see like a semi hooded nib a beautiful beautiful design 
without the feet. The feet is inside this part. Quite, quite an iconic fountain pen. Although it's not such expensive as the other ones, I'm quite proud of this acquisition. It was um, last part of the year 2020 acquisition. I bought it to, uh, with other fountain pens, but I'm quite, quite pleased with it. And it has quite a unique design. Let's move on to a set. This is the most expensive set in my collection. And not only it is expensive, but I also paid a large sum of money for it. I'm not uh, such a um, wealthy collector, but uh, I had, I have, I, I was obliged to acquire this set. I, I, uh, it is my dream set, my uh, grail fountain pen since uh, almost uh, three or four years ago, since I started uh, fountain pen collecting. And before I reveal uh, the producer of this fountain pen, I'm telling you that it's a German fountain pen and it's a set. It is a fountain pen and a mechanical pencil. It is a German one and it was built in the, 90, the beginning of the 1950s. And why not? Let's uh, reveal the price. Uh, well, I paid for it. 1,677 lays and um, in euros I paid for it 344 euros or 417 American dollars. It came in this etui. It's not the original etui but it's the etui from the same German firm that built it. And we have a Schoenecken 362. But in this case, I want to show you my <laughs> proud and joy of my collection. And this is a Schoenecken 111 Extra in this beautiful, beautiful celluloid. It has this uh, uh, piston uh, filling mechanism and it's a patent patented um, mechanism with a click in it. It is considered even more advanced than the Mont Blancs of the 1950s. And uh, it's stunning. It's a beautiful, beautiful fountain pen with a um, double broad oblique nib, a wonderful, wonderful nib. Look at its patina and uh, it writes like a dream. Uh, I'm uh, quite pleased with this purchase and it arrived just before Christmas in 2020, so it was a great gift for me. This is the mechanical pen, Shonikan 11. And um, I think that um, you could buy this fountain pen if you have 1000 euros or uh, 1300 American dollars, especially as a set. So quite, uh, yes, I could say this is the most expensive writing instrument in my collection. I will leave also this aside. And I have another set. Before I bought the Shonaken, those were the most expensive uh, writing instruments in my collection. And they are also from the 1950s. They are made in uh, Central Europe, Bohemia or Czechoslovakia. And this is a set uh, called Barclay. And the model is um, 1305. It is made out of solid uh, gold. Uh, particularly the fountain pen has a beautiful, beautiful nib. And um, let me give it a zoom because um, it's quite a nice nib and you deserve to see it. So it's a repeat uh, 14 karat nib. It is an anniversary nib of the famous 1930s nib producers in Czechoslovakia. And uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful set. As a novelty, it has this interesting filling mechanism. You push on this rod and it fills. 
let me show you of course i did a review and if you know uh, want to know more details about this interesting fountain pen you should go and check it out so i paid for this set 880 lei which means i paid 181 euros or 219 american dollars but um, it reminded me of the mont blanc series of um, uh, silver fountain pens but i knew that i could not afford that one and uh, i was impressed that i found this set in a gold nib so i i said to myself well go for it i think if i would uh, sell this set I would make um, at least what I paid for it. So it's double the price on the current market. Now, I have this beautiful, beautiful Mont Blanc. And believe it or not, this is the first fountain pen from my collection. The first fountain pen that I bought when I started collecting fountain pens. It is a beautiful Mont Blanc from 1952. It's not a usual Meisterstück, but it is a masterpiece. This imprint masterpiece, it means that it was made for the export market. And we have the 146. I paid for it the same amount that I paid for the Pelican. So also 400 lace, which means I paid only 82 euros or 100 dollars. And this isn't an usual 142. It came with this beautiful two-tone 14 karat gold nib. It has this key slope feed, which means it's from the early 1950s. It is a celluloid model. It has a telescopic filling mechanism. And I value it at approximately 1,500 um, euros or uh, 1700 american dollars it depends so this is um, the pride and joy of my mont blancs uh, in my collection maybe one day i will have enough money to buy its bigger brother the 149 also from the 1950s with the ski slope type feed also with the telescopic filling mechanism and with a celluloid it has those two rings in silver and it is uh, also known as uh, silver ring uh, 149 but uh, that one costs around 2000 euros so it is uh, beyond my current possibilities next i have for you not uh, quite an expensive fountain pen but a rare fountain pen so you can buy this fountain pen at reasonable prices but sure if you find this you will find it with a steel nib this is the deluxe version with a 14 karat gold nib the only fountain pen produced in romania in a gold nib and these are quite rare because they were limited to only 1000 pieces i believe and they were given as gifts to foreign diplomats and uh, to important figures in the communist romanian party in the 1970s so i only have one of this many many collectors and i paid only 200 lace for it or uh, only 41 euros or 50 american dollars when i bought it but um, it has been four years and i've never seen another one on sale it is one um, listed on eBay, but uh, at uh, 800 euros, so quite, quite a large price. And even in my country, the collectors of fountain pens, they sell this version, a gold version, uh, for over 500 euros. Maybe of you say, okay, with that money, I can buy myself a Mont Blanc 149. And this is a homage, and this is a homage to Mont Blanc 149. It has the same dimensions and the same beautiful large nib. But I'm telling you that the Mont Blanc 149 is a common fountain pen. It was quite popular and it sold 
thousand and thousand and um, uh, with the thousands. So this is limited only with uh, at one thousand pieces. So if you find this in the wild, just buy it and you will thank me later because this is a rare, rare fountain pen. Next, I have a beautiful, beautiful Mont Blanc 254 and from 1958. And what is sweet about this fountain pen is uh, the fact that it came in its original box with the original instructions. And I paid for this uh, 662 lays or 136 euros or 165 American dollars. Just look at this wonderful, wonderfully shaped nib. I love, love, love it. It is in pristine condition. I think it uh, was hardly used. And um, it is the pride and joy of my collection. Of course, I think that uh, this one should be sold in an open market today for a minimum 200 uh, euros or 250 American dollars with the original box and papers. Let's leave it aside. Next. I have an interesting fountain pen. Maybe you don't consider this a rare fountain pen, but I t tell you it's quite a rare fountain pen. It's a Monterosa, but it's not an usual Monterosa. It is the deluxe version with the 14 karat nib, 042G. And uh, this fountain pen was made for students and you can find it in, the, in steel nibs. The gold nib is more uh, rare, well, I paid for this fountain pen only 160 lays or 33 euros or 40 American dollars. It is one of my earliest acquisitions. You can see here thermically imprinting 042G. It doesn't have the Mont Blanc logo here and uh, another thermically imprinted Mont Blanc and Monte Rosa. Uh, well, I think that uh, I paid quite a low sum of money and uh, it should be worth uh, as many as three times or four times the original amount that I paid for it. This fountain pen I deposited in this original Mont Blanc etui from the 1950s, a leather etui. I found it with uh, other uh, non-related fountain pen. Um, I believe there were watch instruments in it, but uh, I noticed this Mont Blanc. And for this fact, I paid uh, only 30 lays for it or uh, six euros or eight American dollars. And I think that this is worth three times or four times the amount of money I paid original for it if I sell it on eBay. But I don't think so because it's quite rare. <laughs> Okay, uh, we will uh, continue with another Mont Blanc from the 1950s, the 342 Mont Blanc, and I believe it's from 1955. It has a beautiful, beautiful gold nib, and not only it has the gold nib, but it has my favorite ski slope type feed. I love the Mont Blancs with the ski slope type feed and they are specific only to the beginning of the 1950s. I highly collect them and of course I love this Cassane logo that has faded away in time and it has this uh, ivory color to it. So this fountain pen I paid for it uh, 460 lei, 94 uh, euros or 115 American dollars. And I think I did well. It has also a beautiful oblique medium nib, which I simply love. It has this um, personalization on the barrel, but uh, believe me, I prefer for it to be personalized because it is part of the his history. I'm not that collector that wants an immaculate fountain pen. I love the wear and tear of the, my instruments and I think this is a nice example. As for the value on the market, I think um, that I can double my money if I uh, will post it on eBay, but not a chance. I'm a hoarder. I'm not a reseller of fountain pens. And now 
another fountain pen that I am quite proud. This was my first Shoneken fountain pen. It is a model from the 1940s. It is the number 116. It has a steel nib, but it is quite, quite a nice, nice uh, writer. So believe me, when you buy a fountain pen with a steel nib from the 1940s or the 1950s Germany, you have a quite, quite nice uh, writer. Well, I paid for this only 280 lays, which means I paid only 57 euros or 70 American dollars and believe me I think that this is worth at least three or four times the amount that I paid for it it is in beautiful 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 shape so bear with me guys because we are on uh, the last ones here I have a Caveco original 52 from 1937 it is a button filler with a blind cap it is a wonderful, wonderful fountain pen, quite a rare fountain pen. It comes in this beautiful, beautiful gold nib. You can see wonderful, wonderful nib in a wonderful, wonderful shape. And uh, I paid for this only 200 lace or only 41 euros or 50 American dollars. And I believe this is... Um, <laughs> A fountain pen that could be worth at least four or five times the amount that I paid for it. It is in immaculate, immaculate condition. Okay, let's leave this beauty here. Now, the star of our video will be an etui, but this isn't a simple etui. Well, believe me, this is an original etui from the 1930s in this crocodile um, skin. And being from the 1930s, I think this is an original crocodile skin. When it was um, put for sale, it was on uh, quite a high price, but uh, the seller reduced his price. And believe me or not, I paid for this at only 200 lays or only 41 euros or 50 American dollars. But this is a rare, rare find. So. It was, uh, it appears in the original Pelican catalog in the 1930s. And uh, what was the clue? Well, Pelican, and it says DRGM, so Deutsche Reich. And I thought, 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 thought to myself that um, if it says Deutsche Reich on a piece, it means that it's from um, at least 1945. Because the Deutsche Reich after the World War II was divided, you know, between the Allies, uh, between um, Russians, um, um, Americans, and um, French, and uh, English. This is a clue that this was a quite, quite old, old Pelican Etui. Unfortunately, I made a mistake. When I received it, it had a little ink stain here and um, I didn't have a proper cleaning solution in my house. So I used an alcoholic um, solution, 19% alcohol, and it left, left this stain. Maybe one day I could uh, restore it to its former glory. But quite, quite a rare find, this pelican, quite a rare find. And speaking of a rare fountain pen, look at uh, this beauty. Just look at it, because this is the first piston filler. Well, not the first, but the first pelican 100 from 1931. Quite, quite a rare, rare fountain pen. Speaking of rarities... Just look at this beautiful 1920s Italian Aurora. Quite, quite a nice find. And this is the model Era Free Arimpiamento Automatico. I paid for this only 365 lays, which means I paid only 75 euros or 91 American dollars. And why is that? Because it came with um, 
an uh, nib from Omas. This isn't the original nib of Aurora, but maybe in time I can find one. Well, believe it, if it came with its original nib, this would be uh, at least a f uh, three, uh, f 300 and. Uh, 50 400 euros or 500 american dollars this is quite quite a rare fountain pen but a beautiful beautiful fountain pen and in the last place i leave you this fountain pen i bought it in this box and uh, the irony of the situation is this this box it it is from an italian fountain pen in the 1930s a quite rare fountain pen so i believe this box is valuable as it is and you can see that this box is from radius superior another italian fountain pen producers and i will leave this aside because i have here a quite mysterious fountain pen and it reminds us, of course, of the Parker. It is um, a copy or a homage, but an interesting fountain pen. Why do I say that? So the Scotland pen self-filling. Here we have Scotland 18KR. And I'm sorry. We have this nib. And what is interesting about this nib? The Scotland, 14 carat, made in England. So, you would think that this fountain pen was made in England. Well, you are mistaken. Ladies and gentlemen, I present you quite a rare Italian fountain pen from the 1930s. The Scotland pen. Why did they go to this trouble of naming uh, uh, it in English? Uh, sounding names and even imprinting the nib with made in England because in uh, the 1930s at least at, be at the beginning of the 1930s the Italians had a preference for uh, foreign made products especially made in England that was a certificate of their quality of course uh, Benito Mussolini came to power it uh, and um, at uh, the end of the 1930s, they passed some laws forbidding foreign names to Italian manufacturers. They uh, had to uh, abandon these foreign sounding names. So guys, these are my, uh, um, a part of my beauties because I don't consider them to be the most beautiful fountain pens in my collection. Yes, they are the most valuable fountain pens in my collection. And you know that uh, if you want to see them, uh, a writing sample, how they write, they all of them have individual reviews on my channel. So go check them out. Thank you for your time. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation of the most rare, the most old, the most valuable fountain pens in my collection. And I insisted that I gave you the right uh, prices of uh, the initial prices because uh, you can find gems on the second hand market and uh, maybe you would be lucky as I was and you can score some vintage, vintage, rare, rare beauties at quite affordable prices. You just have to do your homework. And maybe you need some little ne negotiation skills. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have those negotiation skills. I pay the full price of the sellers. I don't know if you believe in karma, but if the seller has a quite expensive product, I try to to be fair with, the, with him. And uh, if he asks me, I don't know, five euros, I gave him uh, 10 or 15 euros. But sometimes this action backfires on me and uh, he refuses to sell. He wants to do his homework. This is fine. Uh, I don't care. But uh, believe me, if you think you've done a great deal and um, you stole a product from a seller, that will backfire on you in the long term. So thank you guys for, for your time. Thank you for supporting this channel. It's been almost one year and I'm quite excited because um, I have um, 
a few more subscribers till I reach the monetization of this channel. Thank you for all your support. I wish you to have a nice day wherever you are. See you again at the next uh, episode. And if you didn't subscribe to my channel, please, please help me. Just give a subscribe and you can help my activity and I can share my passion with you. And believe me, this is just the beginning of my activity. I hope that I will present to you more interesting, rare pieces, rare fountain pens that enter my collection. Thank you guys again. And bye-bye.